Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 48 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that a report by cloud software firm Domo stated a large majority of top C-level management in the UK organisations say that they are concerned about the digital skills divide. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, and here we go again with uh, another indication that we're, uh, we're kind of in crisis mode for uh, getting people trained up on any technology that's out there, all the new stuff that makes a difference. So this is interesting. Yeah, it truly is. And there seems to be a report out every week from one company or another about training issues and stuff like that. So well, at least it keeps our training show full of uh, activity and full of content. So that's always, uh, always nice to have. So, look, you know, a great opening question then for you. Is cloud skills acquisition and training getting the attention it needs, do you think? No way. Um, so that's uh, that's the short answer. Uh, and this uh, study kind of uh, outlines that because people are concerned about it. So the fact of the matter is, is that there's not enough skills out there. It's getting worse. Um, you probably see it more than I do being a recruiter. Uh, and it's not, there's no end in sight. And so we can't train people fast enough to get them up and running and put them on, um, on projects. So whether you're working internally for a company or a consulting firm or, or you work for a technology provider or whatever. And it's really at a point where, you know, they're stifling productivity in terms of, of people's ability to move to cloud. I mean, I'm talking to client after client and, you know, their reason for not being able to move as quickly as they need to move is because they can't find the talent. Uh, and of course, consultants are trying to fill up the gap, but they can't find the talent either. Um, so everybody's basically going after the same individuals. and. Uh, training is the answer to that because we have to build a population of people who understand it. Yet there doesn't seem to be a fire in the belly plan to get training, get people trained up as aggressively as they need to be trained up. And I think that people are just realizing this now. They're starting to fire up the recruiting and the training bandwagon to get people the skills that they need. We always say the skills to pay the bills. Um, my fear is it's too late um, for many organizations to get anything done. Uh, in the rest of this year, in, 2000, in early 2019, but they're going to have to start figuring out something soon. Yeah, you know, it is one of those things. I think this report was quite interesting, actually, because I think they looked, they spoke to or polled about 107 CEOs in total uh, and found that there was, uh, you know, a, a generation gap in some areas. 84% uh, of the CEOs aged between 25 and 34 said that there was some sort of threat to the future of their business due to the lack of training. So there is a real fear around this. And we, we spoke about this in, you know, the C-suite show about, you know, embracing culture and the, the cultural change within organizations that, you know, some organizations actually potentially fear that, you know, businesses would be out of business or declaring bankruptcy because of the lack of the investment in training, whether that's in-house or whether that's using a third party like myself and, and, and bringing in the right people uh, with the right skills. So, look, it, it really is a, a fearful moment out there for the people not investing or embracing the right training, isn't it? Yeah, it is, uh, especially for the hindrance in terms of your ability to kind of get things done. And, and you, know, uh, you know, we used to a show that talked about the strategic nature of the technology and your ability to, in essence, change your IT infrastructure to keep up with the changes that are occurring in your particular sector that you're in. And, and if you're unable to do that, um, then that's going to be everything. So if you can't get the skills that you need to actually build the things and rechange the thing, uh, change out the technology, get the data migrated into the cloud, and get things in place, and you know leverage new data analytics with AI technology, and have the data scientists to support that, and the cloud engineers and the you know cloud architects to make it happen, uh, it, it just won't happen in the time you need it to happen. And this could be critical for the business because we could end up taking down the business because it becomes like a house of cards. We can't hire the people we need to build the technology that we need to be innovative, to uh, combat the people who are disrupting the business, who, by the way, saw you know the opportunity four years ago and hired the people that they need to, in essence, build the innovative technology to go destroy that company that's trying to figure out how to uh, protect themselves right now. So it's almost like a pirate ship, I guess, that you know where the cannons are shooting across. Um, you know, people are swinging 
you know, swinging from one ship to the other. And it's uh, it's it's a it's it's going to be a combat zone out here. By the end of 2019, we're going to see serious uh, hindrances in companies' ability to, in essence, change and become profitable to get into the business they're looking to get into. Just because they can't find the people, and that's almost unheard of. Yeah, you're right, and it, and it almost is. You know, people that have these skills are leaning towards where they want their career to be aligned with. So, the type of organisation they're not necessarily going for more money. They're positioning themselves in a, a career strength point of view. So they're working for, you know, working with industries or brands that will, you know, bolster their their next cultural career change, as it were. So it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting spin on things to be honest um, you know in your opinion i mean aws are obviously way ahead le leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else in the the marketplace when it comes to cloud so but in your opinion what would you lean towards with regards to an aws um career you know what what field of work would you be looking at that you think would be uh, the best move for someone that's looking at cloud computing as a career opportunity well, I think understanding the AWS specific cloud stuff and becoming an engineer or a developer or an AWS administrator or operator, you know, those sorts of things are going to be, uh, you know, critical, you know, specific job skills are always going to be important, but it's also, you know, understanding cloud architecture in general, security concepts, uh, cloud security concepts in general, as well as figuring out how they implement an AWS. And I see that as some, um, you know, something missing as well, where we may have people who understand specific skills around particular clouds like AWS, Microsoft, and Google. Your ability to kind of understand conceptually what you need to do to, in essence, figure these things out uh, in terms of um, how security, you know, reaches out everything between the on-premise and, and uh, cloud-based systems and, and uh, how we do security and governance in a multi-cloud environment and things like that is, is probably becoming more valuable because, if I'm just thinking in the domain of a particular type of technology, I'm not necessarily being as creative and innovative as I can because I'm always going to be thinking within that domain. Versus if I understand Microsoft, Google, Alibaba, um, as well as AWS, and as well as some of the legacy systems out there, as well as some of the emerging security stuff, which may be cloud-based, some some based not, you know, as well as the Nutanix, you know, the, the uh, uh, clustered computing systems that we have out there and Kubernetes and all the other things. I'm going to be much more valuable to the organization if I just have particularly very specific, narrow tactical skills. Um, but that may be a bridge too far. Uh, we may want to settle for some tactical skills just to get things forward, but we're going to have to have many of these uh, people in the organization that are absolute experts on not only a particular cloud skill, but you know, the cloud computing in general and how cloud computing works in place while with an existing technology. Um, you know, those people even more harder to find and it does take years to build them versus, you know, just taking a online course in a weekend, which is where you can get a lot of these certifications. Yeah, you certainly can. You know, it's right because we spoke about this, I think a week ago or a couple of weeks ago about being more general, you know, to give to give a, a broader span of where cloud computing's at, how it's integrating, how everything talks to each other. I think we spoke about that, but also about niching down into something that could be, you know, specific to a certain role within a certain company just to sort of, you know, um, you know, get not get your foot in the door, but in order to build on that career, but still be able to have a, a more generalist view, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that a generalist view is something that's uh, going to be needed as, as much as specific skills. And so, and there's no reason you can't have an entry level job into a particular specific skill. And I kind of advise people who are, you know, you know coming out of college or looking to get that first gig, you know, to go ahead and focus on something specific. I mean, I did when I got out of college, I focused on, you know, COBOL, Fortran, and um, you know, and a couple of narrow types of databases, but you need to be able to expand your skill sets and have an interest into what does that mean to the larger platforms and what does that mean to the larger architecture? And you may need to be able to step out of these comfort zones in terms of what the skills are. And so as people progress in their career, they seek additional training, read up on things and become more skilled and add, you know, as to what all the moving parts that exist within the organization and how cloud computing or any technology kind of fits to that. And that's something I think that's uh, not taking off as much as it should. I think people have a tendency to kind of work and their niche skills are typically well paid, um, but we need to have the generalists who are gonna be able to have an understanding of what the complete holistic architecture is, you know, versus a very narrow subset, subset of what the technology is. and. Um, 
you know, that's something that doesn't seem to be a uh, fire in the belly kind of learning thing that's going on right now. People are still, you know, kind of focused on, you know, whatever they're interested in. Yeah, you're right. It's it's people like to be generalists, but at the end of the day, they're going for that quick fix course over the weekend that then they can sort of dash on their CV and get out into the marketplace. And, you know, it could, uh, you know, all fall around their ears if they haven't got more of a generalistic view of how everything, you know, comes together. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, look, you know, it moves us on nicely, actually, for your top three tips this week on the, in the training show, Dave, if you'd be uh, good enough to share. <laughs> sure. Yeah, once again, this is about creating a training and hiring a plan with enough budget to figure out how to solve this issue. And so this issue is not going to solve itself. And so you have to get the recruiters in line. You have to get the job specs written. You have to get the organizational uh, organization figured out. You have to put a hiring plan in place as well as a training plan in place. Uh, you need to start identifying people in the organization, the skills gaps from the as is to the 2B, and how you're going to get from the as is to the 2B. And these are something I rarely see out there as much as we should uh, in terms of everybody wants to change your technology and start moving in a different direction, but they're unwilling to kind of pull the trigger on these larger, more um, uh, difficult things to do and the plan and the money and the budget and training, things like that. A lot of details need to be taken care of. Make sure that this integrates with the future skills required. And so if you're moving down the line, containers are going to be a large part of your future. AI-based data analytics is going to be a large part of your future. Um, you know, mixing in a multi-cloud environment is going to be something that's in your future. And the ability to kind of integrate, um, you know, various um, specialized technologies such as IoT and other things. And in, excuse me, you need to make sure that's part of your um, your training and hiring plan. And that uh, can't stress that enough. People have a tendency to kind of hire for what they need now not necessarily what they need in the future. And the reality is if you're hiring for a year out in terms of what the skills you're going to have to need to have those skills around, that's typically going to be a better, better approach than you trying to do it just in time because it almost never works. I'm sure you as a recruiter understands that. Reevaluate two or three times a year. And so we're not necessarily going to create a training and um, hiring plan and then let it go for a couple of years and have it get out of date and, and stale and people don't follow it anymore and the job wrecks are are not having it updated in a while. So it should be reevaluated two or three times a year with the changes made to how the training plan is going to work. I hate the term committees, but you know, make sure you involve other organizations in this as well. And so they have a buy-in as to what's going to occur with the training and the and the and the recruiting and the, excuse me, the training and the hiring plan. And they're participating in terms of getting the skills and have a say in what skills are going to be brought in. Great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. Anytime. And I really, yeah, you're right. Num point number two really resonated with me about, you know, it's it's so important to know the long term game plan of, of not only the career path of the role that you're you're recruiting for, or hiring for, but but equally what future roles, what where, is the role going to evolve into to needing a team or how's that going to work? And I think that's really important having that that foresight as a, as a hiring manager within an organization, you know, liaising with a third party such as myself that can identify the specialists and that we're, we're really focused on getting those key cloud people into positions that will facilitate projects within the organization. I think that's really, really key. Delegating and knowing where the expertise really sits uh, and understanding the, the future projection of that role is, is so very important. And the conversation I actually like to have with hiring managers is, is, is identifying the training needs within that role and, and have they identified ongoing training, whether that's computer-based training or uh, in-house classroom training or something like that, because it's great to have those conversations with candidates um, that, that always look to be learning and always look to be training. Um, it can be a, you know, a sort of a unique selling point, as it were, to a role if they know they're going to get the latest up-to-date training and they're going to be cutting edge within their career. So, you know, you picked on some very good points there, Dave, and thanks for being part of the training show this week. Much appreciated. Always a pleasure. Thanks very much. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. We covered some great points. As always, the training show, there's so many sort of fears and threats and potentially opportunities around that for people. So, you know, I hope we covered some points. And, uh, you know, feel free to touch base with us on Twitter and all the other social media channels. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I myself am on Twitter, which is at Nelson 
underscore Hilliard. You can get us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all the standard social media places and reach out, you know, join us and remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos coming up. We do three shows every week and uh, you want to check out the Australia show, which is kind of a bit of a global cloud computing show as well as just for Australia. Uh, and also we do the C-suite show as well, where we cover things, uh, all C-level management for training and obviously, you know, problems they're coming across and implementation things. So there's lots of great things covered in the, the three shows that David and I do on a weekly basis. Uh, in the description box are all the links to the social media and also to our blogs, which David writes exclusively for us as well. So check out some of those uh, blogs because they're pretty awesome. Um, you know, thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe, comment and share, as I've already said. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, the only thing to say now is uh, until next week. <laughs>